you. Okay. If you got your Bible, turn with me to Galatians chapter 6. An old familiar passage of scripture that we're going to talk about this evening. In Galatians chapter 6, and just keep your Bible open to that area because I'm going to refer to you a couple more times. Galatians 6, let's begin reading with verse 7. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And finally, verse 10. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. My subject this evening is the reliability of God's laws. And count on them. God gave them. And the Lord said, His word shall not return unto him void, didn't he? But this text reminds us of the many laws that God set into motion when he created all things, both in the heavens and the earth. The, the exciting truth is you can count on God and his laws. You can count on Matter of fact, I mentioned first of all the law of gravity. God set it into motion. I take this pen. I can drop it and it's going straight down. The law of gravity dictates that, does it not? 364 or 365 and one quarter days and a smidgen a year. We can drop that and it's going to go straight down. That is on this earth. However, God also created outer space, didn't he? Matter of fact, I mentioned Sunday about it. He calls the stars by name. Um, but in outer space, I haven't been there yet. <laughs> but we see them on the, the cameras and what have you were they move around and, and the, the weight doesn't seem to matter, does it? By the way, I saw uh, on the news today where that this next trip into outer space, NASA's is sponsoring, they go into the International Space Station. It's an all-female uh, group, all-female. I think that was a total of three, but... That'll be the first time that, that women alone have ventured out that far. Well, but I'm glad it's them going, not me. <laughs> when I take my flight into space, it's going to be with a, the best pilot on earth. <laughs> but what if you couldn't count on the law of gravity? No, what if is it? You can count on it, can't you? It's going to work every time. Man's laws can be twisted, technicalities or whatever, uh, but God's law is absolute. I was 
listening to a bit of the news today, and if you haven't seen it, you probably said I saw it on Facebook uh, a little while ago, and I pulled it up and read more about it on the regular news. But the Supreme Court has been in session today, the nine uh, justices, they're called. They've been to talk about a man by the name of Curtis Flowers. 1996, he walked into Tardy Furniture Store and killed four people. They've tried him six times since 1996. He's on death row right now with four uh, sentences, four people that he murdered. But he's called for a new sentence, and they, apparently they've awarded it to them because of the prosecuting attorney uh, actions that he excluded blacks from the jury. Clarence Thomas is, you see the bit of news today, has been on the uh, Supreme Court since Ronald Reagan put him there several years ago now. But Clarence Thomas asked a question today and they just threw him back. It's the first question he's asking. Y'all hear? They hear all kinds of uh, questions about man's law and so forth, and uh, s several different things they're they're given to consider. But Clarence Thomas hadn't asked a question in three years. 2016 was the last time he asked a question. Previous to that, he has a 10-year record from 2006 till 2016 of not asking a question. And they approached him about why that he didn't ask. He said, well, all these other eight asked too many questions. But if, if you're trying my life or something that pertains to me, I want some questions to ask. <laughs> but that's man's laws, isn't it? Man's laws are fickle. I saw on the news this afternoon, probably you did, Robert Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, was caught uh, hanky-panking or whatever uh, and was video. And now they're trying to suppress the evidence. They, they don't want it shown. And they're talking about removing that from uh, all the charges against him. Uh, of course, he, he, he's by far a billionaire. Folk, you can't buy God off. You might uh, pass it by man, but you can't buy God off. Best part about it, you can confess your sins, and the Lord forgives our sins, doesn't he? And he cleanses us from all unrighteousness, not part, but all unrighteousness, whatever it may be. And I'd suggest to Mr. Robert Kraft, that's what, he's standing in need of. If indeed the facts be as the media has reported, and I don't trust the media, so uh, <laughs> either way. Uh, but all of God's laws work. There's no way around it, is it? The Lord said, be not deceived. God not mocked. Folks, if you're trying to put it for God, it, it, you're wasting your time. <laughs> Isn't that right? You can't do that. Whatever a man sows, be it good or bad. That's what a man's going to reap, isn't it? Some people sow wild oats and then hope for a crop failure. But there's some basic facts about life and God's laws. If you sow good seed, even good deeds, it'll be returned to you. What you do in secret, the Lord said, I shall reward you openly. 
you don't have to get a trumpet and sound when you do something to the Lord. The Lord sees it. No, he looks on the heart, doesn't he? You don't do it to be seen of man. You do it because you love God and what he did for us. But never forget that. He said, I'll reward you openly. First church I pastored up in Cushing, Texas. The pastor that preceded me was uh, short-winded. He didn't talk very long. With all this church service they had during the week, they started at 10.30 Sunday school, at Sunday school and worship service, and you got to be out of there at 12. At least that's what they said. I was a little bit long-winded because I had some things I want to say. <laughs> Somebody bought a clock secretly and placed it <laughs> in the building. And I thank everybody for that. Nobody knew who bought the clock. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. But I said, folks, I've got a watch, and at that time I wore one all the time. I don't now. Everybody's got time on their phones. I was hoping that I was going to reward this ever who it was openly, but then I found out there was a little lady that, that came to church um, by herself. Her husband never came, and he was the guy that was upset because she wasn't getting done getting his lunch ready for him, Act like he had ordered it. <laughs> so we assumed that he was the one that did it secretly. <laughs> I was going to reward him openly <laughs> myself. But I never did solve that riddle. But folks, we need to brighten up someone else's day. And your day will be brighter. You know that? You need to sing songs of joy and your hearts will rejoice. If anybody's got anything to be happy about, it, it, it's you. Over and over and over again, the Lord wants us to come to him. And understand who he is. The Lord's not a respecter of persons, is he? Well, he said, whosoever will let him come. But the best part about it, he says, him that cometh unto me, I'll in no wise cast out. So I say he's never turned the first person away that came to him for salvation. Amen. Folks, that's, uh, the Lord's word is irrevocable. It does not change. The Supreme Court doesn't have to sit down and decipher and go through it and, and figure out how to treat it. Because the Lord's word is absolute. And I'm glad. Because you can't count on man, can you? All right. That's our message for this evening. And may the Lord add his blessings to these thoughts. It all boils down to, in a nutshell, you can count on God's laws not man's. Man's fickle in me. Okay.